Welcome to We Are the People with Tracy Marks and Jorge Estamba, who ask you to know what's happening with your student loan. Tracy and Jorge keep a deep look at student loans in this country and the industries that surround it. Every week, We Are the People will bring you new insight into the corporate welfare industry, such as bailouts, and they connect with student loans. The show will highlight on your constitutional rights and how the current system is built to infringe upon them. Join the conversation by visiting our website chat room at wearethepeople.tv. Or call the show at 888-565-1470 and let us hear from you. And now, let's tune in to Tracy and Jorge for this week's discussion. Good evening and welcome to another edition of We Are The People. This is Jorge Stomba. Tracy is away today. Uh, I've been away for a couple of weeks traveling and on business. Happy to be back in Miami and happy to be back with you. Uh, I have various uh, subjects to uh, touch on uh, today, uh, as usual. Uh, first of all, I, I want to uh, make sort of a personal editorial. Uh, I was born in Cuba, came to this country very fortunately, uh, brought by my parents, uh, running away from communism. Uh, the regime there has been in power for 55 years. I'm very proud to have been born in Cuba, been uh, one of those many Cuban-Americans, two million of us. And um, I'm one of those Cuban-Americans that are very happy what President Obama has done. I, as you know, tell it like it is. I want to be sincere. I want to uh, congratulate President Obama. It's been a long time coming. This is the only way that my country will ever, ever get rid of the communist dictatorship by Fidel and now Raul Castro, the Castro brothers. This is the only fashion that will ever get them out of there. Again, I applaud, congratulate President Obama, the only president who has had the, the uh, courage, not to say the other words that we uh, boys would say, especially we Cubans. Uh, he had that courage. Uh, he analyzed the situation and he knows that for the betterment and for the good of the Cuban people, that's what it's all about, 11 million people, 11 million people, this is the correct decision. I back it up completely as a Cuban-American, as 78% of the American people do, and I feel very proud to be an American, because I am an American citizen, very proud to have lived in this country for all these years, and I'm ver it's a very proud moment for many of us Cuban-Americans for those who do not believe in that this was the right decision, I respect that. But I, again, am very happy. Congratulations, President Obama, uh, for doing what needs to be done to free another country from totalitarianism. Going on another mode, um, we, along uh, a while back when this program started, we used to have Move On Mondays. Now, MoveOn.org is a national organization, which I'm a proud member and have been for a number of years. Um, I am the um, leader, organizer, coordinator for uh, the Miami-Dade County area and certain other smaller areas uh, around South Florida. And I had gotten away from uh, Move on Mondays because we got very busy. And, and in fact, it has been uh, my fault, so to speak. Um, with the Move on Mondays, what I do is I go over what Move on does, what Move on primarily, what they uh, are getting involved with. It's, a, it's an organization of over 8 million people that are fighting for social justice for all, for every American not the 1%, not the 2%, but for all Americans, we fight for social justice. So we say that we're over 8 billion strong, fighting every day for social justice and justice for all, for everybody in our great country of the United States of America. Move On has been, uh, has been around since 1998. Uh, we are a reputable organization. We are on CNN. We are on MSNBC. We're our leaders and organizers based in Washington, D.C. Sometimes regional uh, directors will be on. I have had the pleasure of being on 
of certain programs. I'm on continuously in regional TV broadcasts in Miami for national Latino networks uh, that uh, I uh, am on expressing the thoughts for social justice in this country, which Move On is a champion. The subject that I want to touch on uh, that Move On emphasizes and that Move On is fighting for is the police injustices, the police brutality that are taking part in this country. We all know about Ferguson. We all know about Eric Garner in Staten Island, New York. We've seen the videos of these incidents. We've seen uh, the 12 year old uh, young man, Rice, in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm also involved, and I'm the personal family consultant for the Hernandez family in Miami Dade County, Florida, as this program goes nationally and internationally th through the internet. I also am involved with the uh, Nadesh Lanou family in Broward County uh, with the, uh, uh, let me see, I'm sorry, but I'm forgetting his name, uh, Sebastian Gregory family in Miami Dade, and we'll be involved with the uh, Dilbert Rodriguez family. Uh, all these people have lost their young son due to police incidents, excessive force, police brutality, violation of human rights, civil rights, constitutional rights, except in the case of Sebastian Gregory. Before I go on with police brutality, I do want to mention the incident because we have to be fair. There were two policemen assassinated by a lone wolf incident, uh, as you know. Uh, we strive for to fight for nonviolence. Move on is a nonviolent pacifist movement. We abide by the Constitution of the United States. We're known to be a very reputable, very stable, and again, a pacifist organization. That's why we're so highly respected, and again, why we make it on CNN. We're guests on CNN, MSNBC, and other national broadcast stations. What happened to these two officers is horrendous. It's horrific. We cannot condone that. I personally and move on are not in agreement with any type of violence that takes place in this country. No matter who it's against, we have to seek for peace. We need to seek for things to be worked out, to communicate, and to work through our justice system. So my condolences to the family of these policemen. Again, this is a horrific act that in this country cannot be allowed. It cannot be condoned. Just as we do not condone the violence, the killings by police officers upon civilians, this also is in the same gravity as the killing of these two police officers. They are human lives. There are no differences. These Two men were doing their job, and again, it's, 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 it's horrible that happened. But at the same time, we have to remember that Ferguson happened for a reason. In 1991, Rodney King was beaten to a pulp, and thank God for a video camera. That's when this whole situation started, that police brutality was captured on video, and it, it does exist. It's not a myth, it's reality. Why is it reality? Because police officers are human beings. They have stress. They have faults. They have problems. They are bad police officers like in every other profession. There are bad doctors, bad lawyers, bad social activists, bad broadcasters. There's bad of everything in our society. If we don't think that, then we are not living in the real world. What is it that we need to do? We need to get rid of the bad apples, just like we get rid of bad apples in every type of crime and every type of any type of activity that is a, uh, a uh, delinquency. A delinquent is any type of person that gets involved in violating a crime. Now, there are different types of crimes, obviously, okay? In the case of Israel Hernandez, the family that I'm a consultant for, because I do have a background in psychology, in sociology, and in political science. Uh, I have been working over two years in police brutality case, work in conjunction with American Civil Liberties Union and other organizations. So I'm fairly knowledgeable and involved in these type of incidents, and we have to stop these incidents wherever they may happen. 
In the case of Israel Hernandez, this is the case in Miami Beach, Florida, in August 6th of uh, 2013, where he was spraying on an abandoned McDonald's building in, on 71st and Collins. Now, the police came. He did run. It was a misdemeanor. The family and the Justice for Reefer organization, which I belong to as an executive council member, we do not deny that young Israel committed a misdemeanor, second-degree misdemeanor. It's like throwing a piece of paper in the street or jaywalking. It's exactly the same thing. He did run. He didn't have any arms on him, didn't have any type of weapon, did not offer any type of danger to the policemen, seven of them initially and 13 later on. There are two witnesses. The police reports indicate that there were seven policemen, 13 ultimately. There is no reason for Israel Hernandez Jr. to have died. He was tasered to death. He was beaten to death prior to the tasering, and he died basically on the spot. This is the trend that happens in this country with police brutality. This is why Ferguson happened, because since 1991, there have been incidents, thousands of incidents across this country of policemen uh, doing whatever they want to do because they are never, or sh I shouldn't say never, they are very rarely ever processed by any type of any type of, of uh, judicial system or any type of any governing law or anything. They go free completely. They get suspended for a few days, and that's it. In the case of Israel Hernandez, Officer Jorge Mercado, who was the man who assassinated Israel, was suspended for one week. He's back in the Miami Beach Police Department getting full pay and working administrative duty and capacity. And he had a record of violence. He had a record of possession of, of, um, of cocaine. And he had a record of labor fraud, okay, within the department. It's documented. He's still there. Why is a police officer who is, has violated the law has committed criminal acts in one fashion or another. Why is he still a policeman? Why is he still there? Why aren't police officers given the same treatment that we, the general public, and we, the general citizens, are given? That when we commit a violation of the law, we have to pay for it. That is our judicial system. We have to pay for our mistakes, for our errors, for our violations, whether it's a misdemeanor, or a capital crime, that's what our justice system is there for. And we go through those procedures as civilians. We go to court. We go before a jury. But we don't ever get a break unless you have a lot of money, but those are the exceptions. But nevertheless, they go to court. These police officers do not go to court. In 25 years, in Miami-Dade County, where I reside, where the Attorney General, Catherine Fernandez Rundle, has been there for 25 years. There have been zero, I repeat, zero indictments for any police brutality case, for any excessive force case, for any violation of human rights, civil rights, and constitutional rights by a police officer, by a police officer in Miami-Dade County. The similar situation occurred in Ferguson, in St. Louis County, uh, the Attorney General Bob McCullough also had a similar record where the police are protected even though they commit crimes. They are regular human beings. We recognize they are under a lot of stress. It's a difficult job. We need police officers. It's part of a civilized society. Otherwise, we would be in chaos. What we don't need is police officers who take the law upon their hands, their own, to be the judge, to be the jury, and to be the executioner. That's not what they're there for. They need to pay the price for whatever crime they commit, for whatever violation they commit. Attorney generals need to do their job, but the problem is that attorney generals and police departments are one in the same. That is not justice, my friends. 
This is not how the United States of America works. Justice is blind. We cannot create a privileged class of policemen who continuously violate human rights, civil rights, constitutional rights. The UN has already been involved with this. They looked at the case of Israel Hernandez. They agreed that this was a, a, a uh, egregious violation of human rights and there was assassination. We agreed to the, to the Geneva Convention regarding what policemen can do, but the attorney generals do nothing. This has been happening for years and years and years. We see videos every day on TV of police officers kicking the daylights out of people, beating the pulp out of people, old people, young people of all races. I don't want to convert this into a racial issue. That's my personal opinion. I want to convert this into a human issue. I want to convert this into a justice issue because this country is for justice for all. People in wheelchairs are beaten up by police officers. All people, women. I saw a video the other day on national TV where a woman, because her husband did have cocaine on him, he was already arrested. He was already uh, with the handcuffs, which is very common with these police officers. After the person is on the ground, they beat the living pulp out of the guy, beating the head against the sidewalk. The woman trying to just trying to, to appease the police officer, she was pregnant and the police officer kicked her. Has anything happened to that police officer? No. Where is justice? This is why Ferguson happened. Yes, there were some people who came in, like in every uh, situation where there is the mood is, is very apprehensive, where people are very, very sick of the system, of the justice system, and yes, things are running a little bit hot and high, but most people didn't participate in violent crimes in Ferguson. Those crimes that were committed, they are wrong. You did not burn private property. That is illegal. Those people should have been arrested. Those people must go to jail. It doesn't matter. They must go to jail. They violated the law. Police officers must go to jail. Ferguson was the first incident whereby it had to occur to wake up this country and wake up the attorney generals. Finally, a president also, and I'm not here to uh, have, this, have this made out to be an Obama uh, uh, radio and television show. No, he was the first president to get involved. Again, he had the courage to say, enough is enough. We cannot have police officers violate the law. This is a law. This is a country. This is a republic. This is a constitutional democracy. We cannot allow this to happen. Eric Holder went in there. The first time an attorney general goes into a problematic area. It was long time coming. It took too long. Obama took too long. Eric Holder took too long. I tell it like it is, but at least they did something. If we want this country to remain a country of justice for all, whereby racial tensions are relieved, if not eliminated continue, uh, 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 permanently, which I know is a very difficult situation, but let's reduce the violence, the violence the racial tension, and it begins with attorney generals. They don't do their job. They don't prosecute police officers. They have created a privileged class. They are creating a police state. This is how you create a police state, ladies and gentlemen. And my parents know about police states living in Cuba. This is exactly how they start. They are judged by themselves, by the Internal Affairs Bureau. That is a joke, okay? That's like leaving the fox in charge of the hen house. Then they go to the Florida Department of Enforcement, FDLE. Same thing. We need special prosecutors. We need to satisfy the needs of this country so we can stop the brutalities that happen to everyday common people who are not criminals who have violated a law sometimes, sometimes they are just passers-by. Regardless, we cannot continue. This is not justice. Just like the policeman should have never been shot, 
policeman cannot beat to a pulp, violate constitutional rights, and kill people. Eric Garner was on video. Eric Garner is proof. The young man Rice was proof also of how police officers have gotten out of hand. This is how a country goes into chaos. This is how democracy can be affected because a few that have a badge are abusing it. When I came to this country, policemen didn't act that way. The cop on the beat in the neighborhood was a friend. He knew the people. He talked to the people. He had respect. They would detain people. They wouldn't beat the living crap out of people. Things have changed, and they have changed because there is no leadership at the top in the police forces. Police chiefs don't care. Attorney generals don't care. Now we need to get involved and back up the president. We need to tell Attorney General Eric Holder that police officers must pay the price. They must go through the judicial system that we have in this country. Otherwise, there will be other Fergusons. I don't want other Fergusons to happen. I don't want violence to keep on the rise in this country. I don't want cities to be burned. I don't want young people to not respect and not abide by the law. I want all communities to respect police officers, but that starts with them. They have a responsibility. The police chief has a responsibility. In the case of where I'm involved in Miami-Dade with these people, where have been the congressman? Where has Ileana Ross Lettinen been? Where has Marco Rubio been? Where has Senator Nelson been, who's a Democrat? Because I tell her like it is. I don't care what political party you're in. I'm for justice for all. Where has the police chief been? The city councilmen, the commissioners, completely absent and silent just like most cases around the country. I applaud Mayor de Blasio, who's now being blasted and being blamed for the murder of these police officers. That is pure hogwash. That's crap. The system is the one that's responsible for the death of those two innocent police officers. The system is the one. Those attorney generals, you're the ones who have the blood on your hands. Those police chiefs, you're the ones who have the blood on your hands. Not Mayor de Blasio who was doing his job. Not the other people who criticize your department. You're the ones who have the blood on your hands. And since you don't want to get involved with these police officers, then it's time that the federal government did. It's time that the FBI and the U.S. Department of Justice gets involved. Out of 422,000 cases studied by the U.S. Department of Justice in a 10-year study in two, that culminated in 2001, 422,000 cases in major metropolitan areas, 0.5% of, of crime involved, I'm sorry, of incidences involving police officers of police brutality, excessive force, 422,000, 0.5% of those incidents were ever taken to trial. Not even 1%. We cannot allow this to happen. We cannot be blind. Yes, I'm for police officers. I'm not for violent police officers. I'm not for criminal police officers. Bad apples need to be get rid of. Again, attorneys are disbarred. Teachers are loser certificates. Engineers lose their certificates when they, lose, when they don't comply with the responsibilities. The president gets impeached. We've had three presidents that have been impeached. Nixon was the last, well, Clinton was the last one on, on the impeachment process. Nixon was found guilty in the impeachment process, and there were others. So a president can be impeached. He goes to trial for his errors, and police officers do not. This is, this is, this is crazy. We cannot continue on this trend because, again, what we're looking for is another Ferguson. We don't want another Ferguson. We want justice. And we ask every attorney general to do their job. And now we ask Eric Holder, the attorney general, 
and the President of the United States to do his job regarding the process of due process of law when a police officer is involved. There has to be justice in Cleveland. There has to be justice in Staten Island. There has to be justice in, in, in uh, Ferguson. There has to be justice in Miami-Dade. There has to be justice everywhere. Arizona, California, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Washington. These are all the videos I have seen. Go to YouTube. Don't take my word for it. Go to YouTube. See women getting kicked. See old people getting kicked. I just saw a 78-year-old man who had, an, who had a um, sticker who the officer thought was in violation. And he was not. The police officer tasered him. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot continue this. May those two police officers and their families have the peace that they, they need to be granted. And may we work together as a country to stop the violence, to have justice for all. This is what we're all about. But we cannot look at one side. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. See you next week. Went Remember, stay involved, low, stay informed, stay go, active. Go, go, go. This is how we're going to change our country. Take, Take care. Peace. You have been listening to We Are the People with social advocates Tracy Marks and Jorge Estamba, who every week bring to the light the needs and changes in our current system. Tune in every Monday night at 7 p.m. on wearethepeople.tv and participate in the conversation in the chat room or call 888-565. 1470. Tune in next Monday for more information and facts. And Tracy and Jorge remind you to stay aware of your surroundings and challenges at all times.